Hey everyone, my name is Zach Sopak and today we are going to be talking about how to edit your photos on your phone to make them look professional and stand out. Let's get into it. Well, hey there, I hope that you're having a great day. Again, my name is Zach. I am a content creator living in Southern California, and I wanna help you take your creativity to the next level. And if this is your first time stopping by the channel, welcome, I hope you get some value out of it. If you do get value out of this video, why don't you go ahead and add some value right back to it by hitting that like button, it really helps out a lot. And also consider subscribing to this channel for more regular content just like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that way you can get notified every time I post a new video. With all that out of the way, let's get into editing some photos. So today I'm going to be breaking down a lot of tips and tricks and breaking down the tools in one app in particular that I think is probably the best one to go with with mobile editing, and that is Lightroom Mobile. Now you may have heard of Lightroom before because in the professional world, when it comes to computer software, Lightroom really is the gold standard and their mobile app is really amazing and has a lot of the features that carry over onto your cell phone. So in this video, I'm not only gonna show you the tools that are in the app and how they're used, but I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how I would go about editing a photo. Keep in mind, this is not just for beginners. This is for anybody who's looking to do some editing on your phone. Maybe you're on the go. Maybe you just don't have that nice of a computer right now and you wanna just do some professional editing. All this stuff is really great and useful to know. As I mentioned before, all of this stuff can carry over to the Adobe Lightroom desktop version as well. So this could even be a nice starting point for many of you. So enough talk, let's jump into the app and start editing some photos. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is go to the app store of your choosing and download Lightroom Mobile. Once you get that, as you open it up, you'll be greeted with some options on how you wanna categorize your photos. Not only that, you can actually use the Lightroom app as a camera, which gives you a nice bit of functionality beyond what the normal iPhone app does, but you don't have to use it. It's just there as an option. I've got three photos that I've already preloaded into my phone. One of them I actually took on my Sony camera, and then the other two were from my iPhone 11 here. So I'm gonna show you how I would go about editing all of these things. So let's edit the first photo. This photo here was actually taken on my Sony a7 III, and I recently posted it on my Instagram. Plug for my Instagram, you should go follow me. It's a lot of fun, get to know you some more. Besides that, so I took this with an actual camera, but I transferred it over to my phone. And so let's talk through some of the basics on how I would go about editing this. You notice a few things on in the interface in the top left corner, there's this weird looking wave thing and that's what's called a histogram. So basically what a histogram does, it shows you your entire image and on the left side it has your darks, on the right side it has your lights and then everything in the middle. So it kind of helps to show the balance of your image. And so if you want to enable this or disable this, you just go to the top right corner the three dots and then you go to view options and right there you can either show or hide the histogram I like to have it on though personally because I just like to have that little bit of a guide to know if I'm going too bright or too dark so now clicking back onto the image I'm not gonna really get into the selective or the healing brushes and stuff that's a paid thing so there is a free and paid version of Lightroom mobile but I'm gonna just break down pretty much all the stuff that you can do with the free version it's still very useful you don't need to pay to use this and save settings and everything which is really really great so the first button auto what auto is going to do is basically Lightroom is going to take your image and based on all of its computer software and algorithms Rhythm, it's going to produce as nice of an image as what they think it should look like. So I actually like to use auto sometimes as a starting point because you can get to these images sometimes, especially if you're new and you're maybe not sure, I don't know what to do first. You can hit auto first, see where it starts you out, and then you can make edits and adjust accordingly to that. So let's go ahead and hit auto 
And all right, looks like it brightened it up a little bit. Something that's really great about Lightroom with the interface is that you can actually see the before and after by just holding your thumb down on your image. It'll show you the before and when you release, it'll show you what you currently are at with your settings. I use it all the time. I'll be using it a lot in this demonstration. So just follow along with me. If I hit before, and then after, it looks like it brightened up a little bit of my image, which is good because there was a few areas that were pretty dark and didn't have a lot of detail. So let's hop into our next little tab here, which is light. And this here is going to deal with all of the light and the contrast of our image. So let's hop in. Our first slider, exposure. Exposure, think of that as like a big <laughs> like knob that either turns everything super bright or dark, and you can do that in different increments. So as I go to the left, you'll see it's a very, very dark image. As I move everything to the right, it gets way too bright and blown out. So let me go ahead and hit undo so I can get it back to where it was. So I brightened up the image a little bit, which is great. It obviously needed it. Exposure is a really great tool if in your settings you've underexposed too much or if you've overexposed, you can bring that down with your exposure slider. The next tool that we have here is contrast. And watch that little histogram. As I move it to the left, you'll notice that everything kind of groups together in the middle and that the image almost gets a little gray. That's because the less contrast you have means the more even your image looks and tones. So there's no real difference going on. As I move the contrast to the right, you'll notice that the image is spreading out and it's getting more to one side and the other. So it's putting more of a separation between your darks and your lights. So contrast is a very powerful tool when it comes to your editing. So here they did a little bit of a bump in contrast. I'm okay with that. I like a little bit of contrast. There's another tool too I'll show you a little bit later that breaks down even more contrast. So that's your contrast slider. Highlights. As it says, this deals with the highlights of your image. So in this image in particular, if I bring it up or down, you'll notice in the windows that there is changing. If I bring it up too far, there is no detail left in the windows. If I bring it down more, you start to see some of the detail in the windows. So highlights, I like to bring them down a lot of the times because I like to preserve the highlight detail in my images. So it brought it down to 42. I'll actually probably bring it down a little bit more. And then conversely are the shadows. And just like the highlights works with the highs and the high parts of the image, then the shadows are gonna deal with the shadow parts of your image. So they brought it up to plus 43. Let's see what it looks like at zero. Okay. So you can get it dark, you can get it moody, or you can lift it up and you can get a lot of that detail. Uh, I wouldn't bring it up all the way in this particular image, but where they had it, I'm just gonna hit undo, plus 43 looks really good to me. And like I said, the auto feature on this is a great starting point and it's already done a really good job so far. So let's just keep going forward. All right, we have our whites, self-explanatory. It's gonna deal with the white point of your image. So basically the brightest area of your image, that's what the white slider is doing. I like to mess around with the white slider sometimes. I will back off the white slider because I like how that kind of looks, where it's a little bit more filmic. It doesn't have quite uh, the harshness and the contrast that um, some of these other images do. So honestly, the white point in the image is good. I'm just gonna leave it. The blacks, same thing as the whites, just on the opposite end. So this is gonna be the darkest points of the image. And you can see on the histogram in the top left, as I move it, to the left, the blackest image. Once it hits that line and it starts going straight up at the very end, that means you're pretty much clipping. That means you basically don't have any more information. So I like to take it just a little bit closer to that because I still wanna try to retain as much information in my image from my darks to my lights as possible. So I'm actually gonna set this one down to zero. Now, if we go back up, we have curves. Now, if you're unfamiliar with curves, this could be a little intimidating when you first look at it, but I'm gonna try to dismay some of that for you. So what we have here is basically another way to deal with our darks and lights. 
So if we go all the way here to the bottom left, it's got that RGB, red, green, and blue section. And this is going to deal with all the exposure of the image. So think of it this way. On the left end is gonna be our darks. On the right end is going to be our lights. And then everything in between, you know, mid-tones, mid-darks, mid-lights, all of that type of stuff. Similar to our histogram. So the curves tool is actually very, very powerful when dealing with contrast and making little micro adjustments to your image. And I'll just go ahead and for this image, I'm gonna show you what a standard S curve looks like. And this is a great way to bring contrast into your image that gives you a little bit more control than just using the contrast slider. So let's check that out. So all you have to do is just tap in different areas and then you add in a new point of reference that you can start to move around. And I'm gonna show you here, this is, if I bring this down, it's bringing down some of our low mids right there. So you can see like a little bit more contrast in the carpet, the shadowy areas, there's a little bit more on my face now. So we'll bring that down. And then here, more towards our highs, I'm gonna bring up the contrast a little bit there. And let's just go ahead for a reference to our before and after just to make sure that this is where we want it to be. And it's looking pretty good too. If we wanted, we could do a little bit with the midtones as well. But you can see it can go very south very fast if you go a little too far with the tone curve. So honestly, less points is probably better for most scenarios unless you really wanna get into the fine details. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that middle point. And what we see here is a very loose S on our curve and that's where the S curve comes from. It's just like bringing down those darks a bit and bringing up the highlights a bit. So that way you get a nice balance in your image with contrast. Another great thing too that a lot of people like to do is a faded black look and you can easily achieve that by taking this leftmost section here and just gently bringing that up. And you can see a bit of the difference here I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and then redo it. You can see just a subtle difference where it lifts those blacks up. That kind of gives it more of that film, uh, sort of like vintage -y look. That's not what I'm going for right now, but I wanna make sure that you know how to do that. So I'm gonna hit undo on that. I'm gonna leave my normal contrast. Uh, then you can go if you feel so inclined to break down the RGB curves as well. And let me just show you an example of what that does. So if I go ahead and bring down my reds, it's gonna to start to bring in some more cyan to the image. And as I bring it up here in the highlights, it has kind of a cool look. What you can do then is you can match, you can balance, you can do different things to these other sliders as well. So let's go ahead and kind of mimic the same movement with our green and our blue channels. So green, it's a flat line. To bring it down so now we're kind of evening things out a bit bring it up and then we'll go to our blue as well and this is actually bringing in a nice bit of color so i'm kind of doing like a loose matching on all the curves i'm going to go back and see here looks like the green's up a little higher the red's down a little lower but that's okay because i actually really like the change that's happening right there Let's check that out. Cool. So it's a little heavy right now, but that's okay because I know we'll be able to adjust some of that a little later on. So those are the basics of using your tone curve. So now let's move on to color. So we'll go over and hit color. Let's first talk about white balance. White balance is actually one of the most powerful tools that you can use in your photo editing. It can easily correct or make or break your image. What's really great is that if you didn't quite capture the exact correct temperature or the mood when you initially took the photo, you can normally correct that with your white balance. And it's really powerful because you can warm up an image, you can cool down an image, it'll add to the overall mood and vibe. So it's just trying to make white as pure as possible in your images. So let's check it out. So there's an as shot feature, which it just takes whatever the information was as you shot it, and then it does its thing. There's also another auto feature. Let's hit auto. 
Moving down, we have Vibrance and Saturation. Now these work hand in hand. Uh, vibrance is really more of saturation, but in your mid-tones. And then saturation is just an overall saturation to your image. So if it looks a little too dull in your colors, then you can just bump up your saturation a little bit and your vibrance, and then that'll bring it to life. So this is probably a normal amount. Let's just show you more the extreme end of saturation and then vibrance. This is a little too much for me. Um, honestly, even where it was at with the auto is a little too much for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just double tap these guys to reset them back down to zero. And I actually like what it looks like at zero. Um, personally, I'm gonna actually bring this down a little bit more just cause I kinda like a little bit of mood. And we'll be able to add some additional color in here in just a bit. Now where a lot of the secret sauce to editing with Lightroom comes with this mix button right here with the little color wheel. Now this color mix feature is really the secret sauce that comes into Lightroom mobile editing. You can take specific colors and do certain things with them without affecting the other colors in your image. So you can mess with the hue, which basically hue is uh, whether it stays in its normal lane as a color or if it shifts a little bit to the left or to the right on a color wheel. You can mess with the saturation. As we know, they can you can take the color out of some places. You can add in more color in certain areas. And then there is luminance, which luminance is the brightness or darkness of that particular color. So I'm gonna show you how I would use these in this image. So starting with the reds here. Now, no really what I do is I just take the hue to see where this color is in the image. Sometimes they don't do anything, sometimes they do absolutely everything. And I normally start shifting it to the left and to the right just to see what I'm affecting. So I'm seeing a lot of change here in my skin tones. And you know what? I think I'm gonna bring my reds a little bit to the right towards orange. And if we see a little bit, let me bump the saturation some. And I'm actually gonna bring high, the luminance up a little bit. Let's go into our oranges now. Now orange is pretty much where all skin tone values live for the most part. There's definitely red in our skin, but orange is really where it all lives, whether you're light skinned or dark skinned, orange is normally gonna be the slider that affects this the greatest. So on our orange, let's just go ahead and move it around here. So you can see it's affecting a lot in the image. It's not only affecting my skin tones, but it's affecting the cabinets, it's affecting the ceiling in the image as well. So if you go too red, then it looks like I got sunburned. If you go too far to the right, then I have jaundice and that's not good either. So let's go ahead and keep this in the middle. I'm gonna bump up the saturation just a bit, just to add a little bit more life into the skin. And then now let's mess around with the luminance. Luminance is cool too, because it kind of make your skin pop out a bit. Or if you bring it down, I instantly have a tan, which is super cool. <laughs> so let me let me put that back to zero. And now I'm gonna bring it up some because I actually want my face to pop a little bit more in this image. And again, we can go before, this is our original image to where we are currently sitting right now. And we're looking pretty good. Let's go on to the other colors. Yellow, I find that yellow is really in the majority of a lot of the images that I take. So you can see as you shift it to the right and to the left has a great bit of effect. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave it at zero for the hue. I'm gonna mess around with the saturation. So the saturation in this image is super powerful. So what I can actually do is I can either add in more of that yellow color or actually what I'm gonna do for my personal preference is I'm gonna take the saturation down because then what that does is it really cleans up the image and it makes it a lot more crisp in the whites. So let's go ahead and do a before. You can see sort of that cream color on the windows and then after it's a lot more clean and pristine of a white color now. So let me go ahead and actually bring that down a little bit more and luminance, I'll bring it up a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, move on to our greens, see if there's any green in the image. Now my pants are actually green, but I'm not seeing much of a shift. There is a little bit of a change here in the plant. 
back yonder. So what I do sometimes is I'll take that green more towards the cyan color and then I'll desaturate it. This is actually a pretty popular look that a lot of people do is they'll bring the greens a little bit more to the cooler side and then they desaturate it and it just has this really, really nice clean effect to it. So that's what I'm doing with this one. And then let's see if we do anything with the luminance. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at zero for now. Okay, now moving on to the cyan color. Let's see if we have any cyan in this image. Not much, maybe just on my ring. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. And let's go to the blue section, see what we have here. Okay, so this is actually where my pants live, even though they're technically green pants. Uh, so let's move it to the right and to the left. I'm probably gonna keep it more towards the cyan because I like how it keeps with more of the natural color. And then we can boost or cut the saturation. I'm gonna leave it maybe a little desaturated. And luminance. I'll bring that up just slightly. I wanna take this opportunity to show you something really cool. It's this little target tool that Lightroom has built into it, which basically allows you to point your finger on any point of the image and Lightroom's gonna select those colors in that part of the image. And then you can shift the saturation, the hue or the luminance of that particular color range. So let's try it with the pants. So I'm gonna hit the target and I've got saturation selected. I'm gonna to touch my right kneecap on the image. And you can see that it's got aqua and blue selected. If I move it up, it is now increasing the saturation. And if I move it down, it is decreasing the saturation. It's a pretty cool tool. It allows you to do a lot of fine adjustments. I do it a lot of times with skin tones, just because if it's a little off, I don't want to kind of like guess at it. I just like to put my finger on it. Just have that tactile sort of feedback from it. So I'm going to undo that for now because I liked where it was before. Hit the target, get back to our blue and make a little adjustment on the hue. Cool. I'm good with that. Down to our purples. Don't think we have any purple in this image. I'm just moving this back and forth to see if there is. I don't see any, so I'm gonna leave it. Same thing here with magenta. And not noticing any changes, so I'm gonna leave it there. Now let's move over to our effects tab. Click on effects. And you'll notice in the top right, there's this button called split toning. So if you hit on that, it allows you to basically choose the highlights and the shadows of your image. And if you wanna put specific colors in those ranges, you can do that. So I'll give you an example. I'm not gonna use it on this image, but I'm gonna give you an example of how it works. So if you go to the highlights, let's say we wanna do something like more of a teal and orange look, cause that's pretty popular. So highlights, let's go warm. Let's go towards orange, orange, and then in the shadows, we're gonna go towards the blue. And then you can mess with the balance. So if you want it to be warmer, then you can, you know, more towards the highlights, you can do that, or you can do it cooler towards the shadows. So if we move it to the right, you'll see pretty warm, but you have the cool shadows. You go left, it's more cool and then the warmer highlights. So that's just a cool tool. Like I said, I'm not gonna use it on this one. So we're just gonna back out of that. Go down to your other effects too. This is gonna deal with more so the look and the optics of your image. So we have texture, move it to the right. It does what it says, it adds texture to your image. A Little bit of sharpness, a little bit of crunch. Uh, I like to use this sometimes for certain things that have texture that I wanna make pop out a little bit more. Not really gonna use it in this image, uh, but it is good to know that you can actually do these things in reverse too. So let's say you have too much texture in your image and you wanna soften that up a bit. Then you can actually go towards the left and it will do the negative of whatever that slider is trying to accomplish. So then if I bring it towards the left a bit more, now we're looking really soft, we're looking really dreamy. So if you wanna go for that type of a look, it's totally possible. Not gonna do it with this one. Just wanted you to know about it. Clarity. Clarity is basically, it's a lot of black and white heavy, kind of desaturates your image. Let me just show you what that looks like. As you pump that up, it's really, it's adding contrast, but it's desaturating and it's really crushing the whites and the blacks. So you've probably seen a look similar to this before, 
This is not the type of editing style that I go for. If you wanna go for it, knock your socks off. That's not what I typically do. In fact, what I'll do sometimes is I'll actually back the clarity off because it kind of helps to soften up some of the not so nice parts of the image. And so let me go ahead. So if I go all the way to the left, we're looking too dreamy, but I'll do, let's say negative eight. Check it out on my face. Let's go negative 11. Cool. I like that. So here we are, a little before and after. We're looking really, really good. Okay, let's move on. Dehaze does exactly what it says. It dehazes your image. Ergo, if you do not have a lot of contrast due to fog, due to smoke, or whatever have you, this is a really helpful tool to do that. It's kind of like a contrast slider, adds in some saturation as well. I do use this sometimes in my images because it just does something really sweet to it. So let's see what it looks like all the way to the right. Like I said, very contrasty, adds in some saturation. And if you go to the left, it does the opposite. I'm gonna do probably like plus five or six. So that's five right there, six, four. Let's try again, look here at my face. That's with, without. Does a little something, not too much. I just kind of like the salt and pepper these things in there. All right, down to vignette. Vignette, if you go move it to the left, it's gonna create this nice dark halo effect that's gonna draw the attention into the center of the image. This is very effective for, like I said, bringing people to a certain subject. Uh, I like to use it a ton. Some of my lenses automatically do it and I don't correct that because I actually like the look of it. You can actually inversely do this. So let's say you have a vignette on your image that uh, was there when you took it and you wanna remove it. If you take it to the right, it will counteract the darkness with some light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Let's do a little before action. This is where we were. And this is where we are now. I do like this a lot because it brings the attention into the subject. Moving on, you can mess with the midpoint where exactly the center of the vignette is. You can mess with the feather, so how gradual the dark to light is going to be or how hard it's going to be. I just like to leave it at zero on these because I think it does a pretty good job. So now let's go down to grain. Grain basically gives you this nice sort of like film type look to your image. Just adds in all these little bits of artifacts. I like to use it sometimes because it adds in this bit of evenness to the image. So for this one, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of grain. You can obviously take this to the extreme and you've maybe seen something like this on Instagram here lately, but I'm gonna take it a little less extreme, kind of back down to, let's go with 18, zoom in. Yeah, I like how that looks. And that deals with all the effects and we are nearly done. So let's go over to detail. There is sharpening. If I'm taking photos on my phone, I typically don't add any sharpening because I know that iPhone cameras in particular add sharpness to the images originally when you take them. So I don't wanna add any more to that because when you add sharpness, too much sharpness, let me just show you. You add too much sharpness and it just gets really I don't know, just not that great looking. So I typically don't do a ton of sharpening on my phone images. Move on down, noise reduction, which is very helpful if you're trying to soften up surfaces or people's skin. I'll zoom in on my face and I'll show you how noise reduction works. And I'll take it all the way to the right and you'll notice this looks just like um, some filters that you've maybe used on stories or Snapchat. So let's go ahead and we just pumped up that noise reduction and Need I say more? We're not gonna do that in this one. What I will do is I actually will leave some of it because it does kind of even out some of the complexion in my face. Noise reduction, bump that up to like 10. Cool. All right, I'm liking how this looks and then you can mess with some of the detail and the contrast of that as well, but I'm gonna leave it at its normal settings right now. Then the optics. This really doesn't apply for this image. I can click it on. Chromatic aberration, if you wanna remove that, basically it's little bits of purple fringing that you might see around hair or the edges of people's uh, 
faces or bodies, especially in direct sunlight. So if you had something like that, you could hit that and it would remove it. And then also lens corrections is if you're using a certain type of lens that distorts your image, that's where you would correct that. Then you can go to the geometry tab. That allows you to get into some more depth messing with kind of like how your image uh, looks in proportion to the environment around it. I don't need to do any of that on this particular image. So it's there in case you want to use it. This thing is pretty much ready to go, I think. Let's get a little bit before and after. I think it's looking pretty good. In fact, I personally, I'm actually gonna take the grain down just a little bit. All right. Boom. Before, after, before, after. Looks really good to me. So I feel like this is now ready for posting. So all we need to do is crop it for whatever social network that you're gonna be posting this on. I'm gonna be posting it on an Instagram. So I need to do the proper crop for that. So in order to do so, you just go down all the way to the left, you see crop and then you can do a lot of cool things. There's an automatic straighten feature. So if your image is not straight, it'll do its best to straighten it. You can rotate your image. You can flip it horizontally, vertically. And then the one thing that we're gonna do is just get this to the proper crop. So in the bottom left, we're gonna hit that two by three. Now Instagram, it allows you to do square images, landscape images. But the one that I like to post in is four by five because it gives you the most screen real estate as people are scrolling through. So all we need to do is hit four by five. And then we just select what all we want to be in the image crop. So I'm gonna bring it in. I might cut my foot off a little bit here. Let me hit the plus just to see. Yeah, I like that. Even though my foot's hanging out a little bit in the image, I'm still okay with it. So now that I love this image and I wanna post it on Instagram, I have to export it to my camera roll. All you have to do is hit the third button from the right, the little box with the arrow in the top and you can export to camera roll. And boom, it's in my camera roll, ready to post to Instagram. But now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Zach, I put in all this work on this one image. What if I wanna take that and put it towards some other images? Well, we can do that very easily with Lightroom Mobile. All you have to do is hit the three dots in the top right section of your screen and you hit create preset. Now, when you do that, you get to add a preset name. We'll just call this IG Clean because I can't think of anything better right now. <laughs> There's a user presets thing. I'm gonna just create a new preset group. I'm gonna just call it new. I'm gonna hit the check mark there. And then we can select the different elements of our edit that we wanna bring over into other edits. So we mess with the light, we mess with the color, the effects and the detail. We didn't mess with anything tools wise because it's more of a paid version thing. We didn't do optics and we didn't do geometry. So I'm just gonna leave all that be. Everything selected that I want selected, I'm just gonna hit the check mark again and we just added a new preset. So now let's go to one of our other images and we're gonna add our preset to that. And what's really great about that is you get to keep this nice bit of cohesive flow to your images. And then that way, when people get used to seeing your content, they're gonna know right off the bat, like, oh, that looks like Zach, that looks like so-and-so. So it's just really nice to have a bit of consistency across all of your edits. So let's check it out. So I already have an image uploaded, swipe it to the right. And I have a picture of my wife, just we were going about randomly here in our town, found this cool little section with some palm trees by this house. So um, let's go ahead and add our preset now to this. So let's swipe all the way over here and we'll see presets and we'll go to new and we have our preset there. Boom, IG clean, hit a plus. And right there, we've got a nice little edit. Do a little before, after, before, after, in comparison. Now a little bit can be done to change the differences between the previous edit I had that we did together and this new one, but it gets kind of everything in the ballpark. So then that way I only have to do minimal editing in order to get it looking consistent with that. And everyone, that is all the basics to Lightroom Mobile that you need to know. 
I hope that you got some value out of this video. I know it was a long one, but if you did get value out of it, go ahead and leave a like on the video. It helps with the algorithm and it helps me to know that you are enjoying this content. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more regular content just like this so we can all up our creativity together. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that way you can get notified every time I post a new video. Have fun with Lightroom. It's an absolute blast. You can get lost in it for hours. I hope that you start creating some amazing looking images. Go ahead and share it with me on social media or right here on this platform. And I'm just excited to see what you guys create. Until then, my name is Axel Pack, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.